Awol. Now the third book right here. There's a little there's a little mark I guess when the postman delivered it. Some of the books got a little banged up right here, and um, we're gonna work that out. And we made a little adjustment to the covers. So we're gonna have two kinds of covers to to this particular book: a white cover and a black cover. But basically, both of them are the Ethiopic legends of Our Lady. And this is this is the book right here, the Ethiopic legends of Our Lady. Let's see the side of it right here. We have Ethiopic legend of Our Lady Mari or Mary Mariam. Mariam. And this is the book right here. We made a couple adjustments. This copy has a little has a little mark there that got there, I guess, in and when it was delivered, but it's here, and it's here. This is the book for the sisterhood. This is the first page, the title page right there. You can check this out. All right. And it's another Wallace Budge book, which is now published by the LOJ Society of His Imperial Majesty, this Rastafari Brotherhood. But this book is so important for the sisterhood. You know, this book right here, this one. And this is the white, that we call it the the blue and white edition, and we have a gold and black edition as well that we're going to come out with. Um, different covers, but the Holy Spirit said to, you know, do it like that. And this comes under Ethiopian literature, Ethiopic Christianity, and African Mariology. Yes, African Mariology, which is radically, it's a 180 degree difference from so-called European or Romanish, you know what I'm saying, Romanish, um, so-called uh, Virgo, um, um, Virgo Mary. Remember, we touched on that particular distinction right there. Now, what has happened in the Ethiopian church is that many of the original iconic indigenous pictures, you understand, like we see one of these indigenous pictures right here, of this a mystic, you talk about Picasso, you talk about great art. We're sorry that we can only publish this in black and white. Some of them we've got an opportunity to see in color. They are so beautiful and as works of art to hear some of the slander and jealousy that some of the Europeans have leveled against it while others basically have rebutted. Other Europeans says no, this Ethiopian art we're learning now because they're learning about you know, all these so-called Picasso designs, cube art, and we see all of these thousands, oh, not thousands, well, almost more than a thousand years before they ever arose in the Western Gentile sense. But this right here is the legend, the legends of Our Lady Mary, the Perpetual Virgin, and her mother, Hannah, translated from the Ethiopic manuscripts collected by King Theodore at Magdala, now in the British Museum by Sir E. A. Wallace Budge and his his degrees, sometime scholar of Christ College, Cambridge, and 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 Terwitt Hebrew scholar, keeper of the Department of Egyptian and Assyrian Antiquities in the British Museum. And once again, this work is now published in this new edition and printing by the Lion of Judah Society Limited, Brooklyn, New York, and Addis Ababa, E.T., Imperial Publishers, M.M.X.I.I. Uh, 2012, in other words. This particular book, we are so happy to be able to publish this particular book right here, The Ethiopic or the Legends of Our Lady, the Perpetual Virgin. Now, it's interesting. This is one of the old pictures right here. One's, there's a whole story behind this particular old picture right here. Right? Now, you notice what side the child is on? Now, one wouldn't think there would be a big controversy over that, but it's interesting some of the, some of the back notes on this. Budge down here at the bottom, he, he uh, annotates this, and he says the oldest known Ethiopian picture of the virgin and child. The picture I just showed you, this particular picture right here, is one of the oldest known Ethiopian pictures 
of the virgin and child, right? One of the, one of the oldest known. Now, notice the side that the child is on, all right? Now, it says right here that showing our Lord, Gitachin, Adonenu, in the Hebrew, our Lord, Adonenu, resting on Mariam's right arm. Now, they say that this was uh, 15th century. That means it was sometime in the 1400s. When you hear that, like whatever the century is, it means in the hundreds before. So if it's 15th century, it was 1400s. If it was um, 16th century, it was 1500s. Like now we're in the 21st century, but we're in the 20s. When it was in the 19th century, I mean, the, when it was a ninth of the 20th century, it was the 1900s. When it was the 18th century, it was the, um, the, 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 the 1700s. And the 19th century was the 1800s. It goes like that. All right? But this was the 15th century. At a later period, the Ethiopian artist was said to have copied one named Brancaleone's famous picture and placed the child on Mary's left arm. On her right arm is the archangel Michael, and on her left arm is the archangel Gabriel. At her feet is the Abuna. All right, at her feet is the Abuna. So you see this right here, one of the oldest known. Now, there's a backstory to that as well, but we just want to point this out. Now, when we speak about this thing with the Mardi, Our Lady, when we speak about Ethiopic, let us bring this this um, image to light. This is who we're speaking about when we're speaking about um, Our Lady. So when you hear I and I and True Elect Rastafari speak of Our Lady, we're speaking of the Black Madonna. We're speaking of the true Ethiopian Mary, the true Mary of the Bible, that Ethiopian Hebrew. In other words, we already recognize that the true children of the Beta Israel are like the children of the Ethiopians. And there's a whole lot of historical evidence that proves this. So we didn't publish this picture with this, but if we were to choose a, another cover, and if the sisterhood is of consent with it, then we will publish a cover like this to really, I, I think that would be a new uh, a, a new and a good publication of it. Just come to think about it, you know, at this present time. Now, but this is the pick. This is the pick that we are using currently, all right? This is the pick, you know, the blue, the blue-black, all right? Now, this particular book is good in so many ways, but let me just give you some of the back the back notes that we have here. All right. Um, it's a 1922 reprint, the version that we're printing, and you see how thick the book is. It, it, it has some of the, um, uh, all of the ancient Ethiopic from the Ethiopic. You know, it was learning of Kedistin Grumarian, the Black Madonna, the true example for our sister daughters, mothers, and wives, as well as I and I self, her, her example of faith is, is really amazing and astounding. So there's various translations in here, the history of her mother, Hannah, the covenant of Christ with the Blessed Virgin, um, the Annunciation. Um, it also has the vision of the Raio Mariam, the vision of Mary, the Wadasi Mariam, the Arganona Dingam is also contained in this particular document. But here's a couple of words that we were able to show you this right here. A couple of words that we were able to um, to say in our back notes back here, right? In some of the back notes back here. And here's what we said. Here's what we said. Ethiopic legends of Our Lady Mary, the Perpetual Virgin, and her mother, Hannah, 1922. Translated by Sir E.A. Wallace Budge, translated from the Ethiopic manuscripts collected by King Theodore at Magdala, and now in the British Museum. The number of Ethiopic manuscripts containing legends of the birth, life, and death 
of Virgin Mary is very great, and the translations of all of them would take up many volumes. Budge collected a series of legends of the Virgin from Ethiopic sources and added to them specimens of all the principal devotional works that are found in the Ethiopian church liturgy and so produce the present work illustrated and there's illustrations in it now the legends of our lady mary the perpetual virgin and her mother hannah 1922 is a rare and essential document for reading for study and for meditation by all of the tawahido faithful but moreover in the opinion of the present writer, in a Rasia Dinos Tefari, the present writer being I, for our sisters, wives, mothers, and daughters. Therefore, I write this forward and introductory note as a brief word of advice and recommendation. In particular, is both to and for the Ras Tefari sisterhood i.e. the faithful sisters and mothers in Adonai. May this book be to the glory of Jah and for all whom hail the new name of Ras Tefari, in spirit and truth. Amen. Now this book, it contains very many gems, both of both spiritual and mystical content that is sadly missing in Gentile or European Christianity. It treats both background and culture of the Ethiopian black virgin Mariam, Kedis Dingal Mariam, the mother of the Savior, and her mother, Hannah, as well. Such subjects of the early church or the early Christianity have been almost entirely lost and sadly perverted in the Western or the Romanish, the Romish Catholic Church or their tradition. Some scholars even have dismissed the veracity, that means the truth, the veracity, it's living testimony, basically for one reason. The one reason why they dismiss our sources and our references, first of all, it's older than their European sources and references, we say it right here, is because it is Ethiopian. And that means and meant black or African. A groundation for all of us, but especially and most emphatically for daughters of Zion, whom we call our sisters, and like Our Lady to be honored as holy mothers in Ras Tefari. So some would say that, well, most of what we have preached and what we teach, some might think it is um, black male um, centered or black male orientated. Well, we recognize the true order, you understand? And we as black men, black males from, from, from the first Adam and through the second Adam, Christos, the black Moshiach, must step up. But the redemption of, of humanity was not only affected through um, correcting the first Adam. It was also through correcting the first Eve. So you see, we now are under um, foreign Gentile um, dumb minion or dominion. You know what I'm saying? We've been dumbed down. Um, we've been whitewashed. We've been corrupted. We've been disorientated. And then we can see the fruits of the counterfeit Christianity in the breakdown of the black family. You understand? And, and the baby mama dramas and the whole deadbeat baby father conspiracies and, and all, 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 of this, all of this divide and conquer. You understand? And we are perishing because of a lack of knowledge, the lack of knowledge. In, in fact, um, most people are stuck in ignorance, you know, just doing by tradition or, or, or limiting themselves to their trauma-based programming and mind control. Now, all we can do about that is to know the truth and to preach and proclaim the truth and to pray and to hope that those who hear the truth come out and repent and have a 
change of mind. And now for those of us who say awo and amen and accept the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ, it's very important that we also focus on the mother. You understand? On the mother. Now, we have taught and we teach that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit does not include the mother in that context, the Trinity. Some some folks don't really get it. But the mother, you understand? And these documents do prove it. The mother, in its applicable sense, is the church. You know, is the church. The church, not the building, but the community of the faithful. When one is born again, one is born again amongst that faithful community, and they are born again as a child. And those who know and who have grown, they help their younger brothers and sisters. Now, um, the Ethiopic legends of Our Lady Mary, they give us an invaluable resource and a reference to the root and the truth, not just of our own traditions, but of the oldest and the ancient and early church traditions. You understand? Know and the key thing that we have to keep in mind is that that early church was a black or an Ethiopian church. And then when the Satanistic hostile takeover in Christianity and popery came up, this church went into isolation. And almost everywhere else these documents were contained was, was destroyed. You understand? Many other places were overrun and destroyed, not by so-called heathen, but by so-called Romanish or Roman Catholic so-called Christians, almost like what we see in, in the invasion, the fascist invasion of Ethiopia. Benito Mussolini in Italy had the Pope and they claimed to be Christian, but yet their works were not the works of Christ. Their, their speech, they were like wolves in sheep clothing, seeking to destroy our divine heritage. But all thanks and praise be to the King of Kings in the name of Jesus Christos. They have not been successful, and Jah has prevailed. This is the reason why we have these resources, so we can say, here, this is the proof, this is the truth. But for the sisters, sisters, daughters, mothers, and wives who are hearing this, um, please get a copy of this. Unfortunately, we cannot distribute the copy freely as we would like, you understand? But if there's any um, difficulty, if one doesn't have the funds, so forth and so on, as, as sisters, daughters, mothers, and wives are interested in this particular document, send a contact and, and, and make I and I work out something as far as with the price or the course or something like that, or if you want to get a copy for your cistern or so forth and so on. It's very, very important. We cannot neglect our daughters, mothers, and wives, and we cannot neglect the best examples in spirit and in truth. And the Ethiopic legends of Our Lady Mary is very important. Just remember the old saying that the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. So when they corrupt the woman, as they're doing in this present time, when they corrupt the true, the true, um, the true essence of the daughters of Jah, when they make the daughters of Jah the daughters of Babylon, when they bring this this horror, this whoredom down, you know what I'm saying? It is to destroy that messianic, that prophetic seed. Cointel Pro hasn't really stopped. It's just changed names and faces. You understand? So this, once again, restores the divine order, you understand, for our daughters, mothers, and wives, but for all of I and I, because all of I and I who truly have been born have been born through a woman, and all of I and I who are born again, you understand, we are also born again through a woman, even the law. Now, Mary is very unique because she's now a living example when we ask, well, um, what about the woman, the daughters? We know that the men have certain God-given roles and responsibilities that we have to fulfill. This is why we focus some of the lessons more exclusively to the brothers to let them know, listen, these things by Jah are our responsibilities. And now we say to the sisters, these things by Jah are your responsibilities. So get informed so you can get involved. And this is the Ethiopic legend, the Ethiopic legend of our of our lady.
All right? Get a copy. Shalom Ras Tafari.